My name is Olivia Seltzer, and I'm an 18-year-old youth activist. But I don't lead marches. I don't hold signs. I don't stage sit-ins or walkouts. In fact, I'm completely terrified right now. Let me explain. My entire life, I've been painfully shy. Talking to people, friends, strangers, anyone, proved a near impossible task. I struggled with feelings of intense social anxiety. I would feel nauseous before meeting with friends, even close ones. My heart would be pounding so loud I could hear it, and I'd find myself up at night over an upcoming social activity. Often, I'd avoid social interaction altogether. At the same time, I found myself becoming increasingly passionate about our world and the people in it. I'd spend hours discussing the news with my parents and even longer thinking about all the things that needed to be fixed in the world. By the time I was a teenager, I knew I wanted to do something to affect serious, lasting change. I just didn't know how. Everywhere I looked, I saw incredible examples of young people making a difference. Malala Yousafzai, who won the Nobel Peace Prize at age 17 for her work in girls' education, was my hero, and a sign that growing numbers of our generation were taking a stand for what they believed in. And better yet, people were listening. But there was a problem. I saw no real way I could get involved. Every kind of activism I was seeing involved organizing marches or public speaking or even just putting together a group of friends. And as someone who identifies as shy, introverted, and socially anxious, none of those things were an option. We're taught that activism requires certain qualities, qualities that I don't possess. In fact, according to a Forbes article, it's estimated that at least half the population are introverts, the definition of which is a shy person. So how could someone like that possibly be an activist? at least the kind that I was seeing. I'm going to pause here for a little anecdote. About five years ago, when I was 12 years old, the United States had its presidential election in which one candidate was sharply against immigration. I attended a junior high school where the majority of the students were Latinx, many of whom were the children of undocumented immigrants. Personally, my grandfather was a Jewish Mexican immigrant who illegally came to the US before eventually getting citizenship. So you can see how this election was deeply personal, both to me and the hundreds of students at my junior high school. After the results came out, all anyone could talk about was the election. As someone who's always been very political, I was even more activated by this event. And I could see that others were too. The election exposed the massive interest my generation has in the news and in politics. But there was an equally massive problem. My generation wasn't reading or watching the news which left this massive interest without an outlet. It's not hard to understand why. If you read the news, any news, the reporters and journalists are all going to be adults. Similarly, their intended reader is not going to be someone of my age group. Try watching the news and you'll see ads for fighting hair loss. Well, that might be a problem for me eventually, certainly not one now. And that's because, but again, no one's expecting someone of my age to be consuming the news. This creates media that's completely inaccessible for teens and young adults, not just because the news is not intended for us, but also because it's written in a way that's, unfortunately, not very engaging or understandable for young people. I saw this as a huge problem for a variety of reasons. Every day, something goes on in the world that affects countless lives. And if we don't know about these things, we're doing a serious disservice to the people being affected for a very big reason. You can't change the world unless you know about it. Meaning, how can we be expected to create change if we don't even know where change needs to be made? Short answer is, we can't. Because there is no news source for teens and adults, and because we then weren't reading or watching the news, you're missing out on the opportunity to participate in the making of our future. Not only that, but we are being robbed of our chance to help those in need. It's just that simple. I'll make it even simpler. One of the most important aspects of being human is the fact that we're bipedal, which means we walk on two legs. The reason for this is because the apes were thought to evolve from lived in areas with tall grasses. On four limbs, it was impossible to see over these grasses. However, the instant apes began walking upright, they could suddenly see the world around them, which enabled them to ask questions. This ability to take in the world in wonder is what makes us human. In other words, our ability to take information and innovate based on that information. The problem was, I found my generation was unable to do this for the basic reason that we weren't being given this information in the first place. 
That's why in February 2017, I decided to create the cram. Each morning, I wake up at 5 a.m. to read the news, create relevant stories, and rewrite them in a way that speaks to Generation Z. Then I send this out in, an, in a, a quick, informational, and witty email, text, and social media post. Our mission is to educate and activate, and our readers come from over 113 countries all over the world, from here in the US to India, from the United Kingdom to Australia, and from Pakistan to China. We have, we have over 500 youth ambassadors, and I'm proud and honored to say our newsletters now have two and a half million monthly views. Because of the cram, I've had first-time voters tell me they now feel confident while heading to the polls. I've had young people begin having the important conversations about the issues that matter. I've even had teens tell me they organized marches against sexual assault or gun violence at their schools. I found this incredible. I had started the cram because I saw a problem that needed to be solved and because I knew I could solve that problem. Once I, come up, once I came up with the idea, there was no hesitation. I confidently thought, I can do this. I've always loved writing, so spending hours each day typing up a newsletter wasn't an obstacle. As an introvert, waking up at five every morning to write all by myself was actually comfortable for me. So you could say that writing is my skill set. The crazy thing is, my writing began inspiring others to start doing the things I can't do, like, for example, organizing a march. And that's the point. Activism takes many forms. Everyone has a skill set. People commonly hear about issues they think they can't fix. For example, I know I can't use my mind to cure cancer or bring a human to Mars. That's just not where my skill sets lie. But what I can do is educate people about the problems facing our world so they can use their individual skill sets to find the solutions. Here's the truth. Everyone can be an activist. Everyone can make the world a better place. That's my strongest belief in life. And that's what I work towards at the cram. Because the cram isn't about my success. It's about the success of the readers. It's about uplifting young people around the world by helping them understand that their skill sets can be used to make a difference, regardless of what those skill sets may be. There's no mold for activism. There's no checklist you need to mark off. Activism means different things to different people. But most importantly, there's no person alive who can't create a sizable, tangible change. When it comes to activism, the words, I can't do it, shouldn't exist. Helping people isn't off limits for this person or that person. It's something we all need to be a part of. And once we realize that, that's when we'll be able to truly change the world. We are all individually unique. We all have something to offer. We are all capable of using our skill sets for good. And we are all, every single one of us, activists. So I want everyone to pause right now and take a second to think. Who are you? What are you good at? What do you care about? What is the problem you see in this world? And what is something you can do to solve that problem? I want everyone to hold that last answer in their minds because as soon as I'm done speaking, I want you all to go solve your problem. It might sound hard, but trust me, it's easy to have a positive influence on the world. So everyone, stand up. And stand up. <laughs> stand up like the primitive humans before us. Look above the tall grasses and around at the world and find something to stand for. Thank you.